Well, it's wonderful today to be here with my very good friend, Kyle Ray. I first met Kyle when he and Petra were newlyweds, like freshly minted back in 1999. And we've been journeying together for about 20 years. Most of that time we hung around in Grand Rapids. I moved away, he moved away, and now is pastor of, lead pastor of Scent Church in Plano, Texas, a suburb of Dallas. And so good to see you today, brother. It's good to see you too, Wayne. It's good to hear your voice. It's always good to see you. And uh, wow, we get to talk together about something pretty significant in both of our lives, and that's the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Um, that was the first theme of an amazing prayer time this past Sunday, a global prayer event. And the first theme was being filled and led by the Holy Spirit because it was Pentecost Sunday. We talked about the fact that the Holy Spirit comes to fulfill a promise of Jesus that the Holy Spirit would empower us to be witnesses and that we would, uh, as witnesses, see him work in signs and wonders like he did on Pentecost and then also have the responsibility to be verbal witnesses ourselves. I know that's something uh, close to your heart. So the Bible talks about being filled with the Spirit and uh, in an interesting passage it talks about don't be drunk with wine but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So there some, seems to be some connection between being under the influence but when you think, Kyle, of the Holy Spirit filling your life, uh, what have you learned about the fullness of the Spirit in your own walk with Jesus? You know, I was talking to someone about this this morning because I was reading in the book of Matthew where John the Baptist says that Jesus was coming and he was going to baptize people with fire and then Jesus gets baptized himself and the Spirit descends like a dove. And I, I thought about that idea of being baptized afresh, immersed in the Holy Spirit day in and day out. Like there's this event, Pentecost, that happens, but then there's wanting more and more. So we have a seven-year-old who when we go to the pool, if I throw her in the water and she goes under, she comes out saying, do it again, do it again. <laughs> and, you know, I feel like that's what I want and need in my life. My life was changed um, when I allowed the Holy Spirit control over everything. And so... Um, I want that day in and day out, that, that re-anointing or whatever you might call it. We get hung up on our theological language, but I need the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit to do the work of ministry God has called me to do. Yeah. Well, I know if Petra were on the call, she could fill me in on how much she's seen you change over the years, and that would be a good thing. We'd have a witness to that. You know, I find one of the most... Uh, uh, attention-grabbing verses from Jesus talking to his disciples. He says to them, uh, but very truly I tell you that it's good for me to go away, Jesus said, because unless I go away, the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, will not come, but if I go, I'll send the Spirit. And, and I'm just struck that the disciples must have said, what? I mean, what could be better than being physically present with Jesus? And he talks about being filled with the Holy Spirit. And and then in other places, the Apostle Paul writes about the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and the gifts of the Spirit says, I don't want you to be ignorant. So there certainly is an inflowing of the Holy Spirit, but there's an outflowing of the Holy Spirit in fruit and gifts. Um, and obviously, in order to be empowered to be witnesses. How have you seen that outflow working from your own life? Yeah, so I often look at the disciples, and I think how that lines up with my Christian experience and many others. I knew Jesus, knew about Jesus, had surrendered to Jesus as a teenager, straight away a bit in college, and then at some point was confronted with the reality that I was holding back parts of my life and hadn't you know, fully surrendered them to the Lord. And there was this moment, a defining moment, I would call it my day of Pentecostal moment, where I said, Lord, I surrender it all to you, my uh, my career, my marriage, everything. And, you know, I look at the disciples, we wouldn't question whether or not they were followers of Jesus before the day of Pentecost. But something changed, something was different, yeah. they were filled. So, so in my life, it's just, for the last 21 years, ever since that moment, um, 
I know that my purpose has been clear. Um, there's this, this desire to lift up the name of Jesus and everything that I do. Um, it feels like the whole trajectory of my life changed uh, in my mid-20s when I said I surrendered all to you and, and allowed the Holy Spirit to just take over completely. So that's been a good change for me. Um, I, I have no regrets. Um, it's taken me to, to places in my marriage and uh, just our journey as parents and as a pastor that I never would have anticipated years ago. Well, uh, you know, part of it was getting away from that University of Michigan. I got to tell you, that's just, uh, that was a good, oh, no, I've, how'd that mug show Oh, up I was just picture? drinking some coffee. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, uh, yeah. Did you say something about the Messiah? Um, <laughs> go. But I also was privileged to know you through a lot of those years after you experienced that complete commitment to Christ to see how the fruit of the Spirit was evidenced in your life, and and as a lay person, how you stewarded your your mm -hmm. gifts. You were an engineer. You were a lay person within the congregation, and then called the ministry. And how those gifts emerged even more powerfully as a result of that. At, at some point, um, I felt like God began to, or I began to ask God the question, "What did you create me to do?" I like engineering, but it's not what I would do if money wasn't an issue, you know, what did you create me to do, Lord? And, um, you know, I just, I credit the Holy Spirit, sometimes speaking through my wife as well, but um, <laughs> I never would have had the courage to leave that engineering job, to go off to Asbury Theological Seminary, and then to um, come on staff there at Kentwood Community Church, had it not been for the help of the Holy Spirit. So again, the Holy Spirit, just by surrendering to the Holy Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide me um, everywhere along the way, whether that was adopting children from the foster care system, um, whether that was stepping into a, a pioneering role at Kidwin Community Church, or even the move here to, you know, to Plano, Texas. Um, it's all been, you know, I would say spirit led, and I don't use that in a cliche way. Um, I would not be where I am if not for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You know, I've been thinking in current circumstances with the racism um, with the murder of George Floyd, with the um, violence that's come out. But also, I've just been so proud of Wesleyan churches, Wesleyan pastors who've engaged in appropriate protest, who've entered into a time of speaking. And it strikes me how the fruit and the gifts of the Spirit work together because, uh, well, I've come to think of it this way, it's very powerful to be a person of peace, so that fruit of the Spirit, but still have a prophetic presence by being there, by speaking, by participating. Um, the gifts and the fruit tend to work together. And obviously, there are some issues that are so big, so complex, so um, well, as, as the Bible describes it, the acts of the sinful nature. Without the fruit of the Spirit, we don't have a chance, do right. we? Right, we don't. You know, when I think about those events, especially recent events with George Floyd and then Mr. Cooper, who was bird watching uh, in Central Park, I think that um, I don't. I don't claim to know all of the the details of their faith journey at all, but I know that in the case of George Floyd, what you start to hear people describe about his days in Houston is that he was a person of peace that gave churches access to parts of the city that they wouldn't have been able to enter into otherwise. So wow. he, he was that, that person that if, if you could get that person of peace to buy into your mission, your vision, your ideas, they could give you access. He was able to give them access to parts of the community. So as churches, we, we all need to be looking for those George Floyds that are, that are willing to you know, pull a baptism tub onto an inner city basketball court and allow us to, you know, have access to baptize people. And then when I think about Mr. Cooper, who was um, bird watching, again, I don't know his faith journey, but I know to be in the face of someone saying, I'm going to call the police on you and say that a black man is threatening my life. And for him to have the patience. Now he pulls out his cell phone and patiently, you know, records the scenario. I know that patience is part of the fruit of the spirit. So regardless of his faith journey, I think we saw the power of patience because once that video is out, it opened people's eyes to see 
some of the uh, injustice that's in our world where you can weaponize someone's skin color against them. And then just the connection of the two events, you know, it's been, it's been a time for me where I've needed the comfort of the Holy Spirit because I look at what happened with George Floyd and I think it's easy for some people to say, well, you know, if he had made better life choices or if he hadn't been where he was, or, you know, all these things, then the outcome might have been different. He might have never ended up in police custody. But yet you look at Mr. Cooper, who was bird watching, had the police shown up when his skin color was used as a weapon, he might have ended up in the same situation. And yet you could say he had done so many things right in his life choices. So it was one of those moments where for me, I realized when there's injustice in the world and the sin of racism, it doesn't matter that I was an engineer. It doesn't matter I went to a Big Ten school or an ACC school for a master's or a great seminary, you know, Asbury. None of that stuff matters when racism is at play. So I've said, Holy Spirit, I need your comforting presence to remind me to continue to be bold, continue to be a bridge builder and not be discouraged by the sins and the brokenness in this world. Hmm. I love how personally the Holy Spirit fills us and provides each of us with just what we need. So would you lead us in prayer for those listening, those joining in with us for the fullness and the leading of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that you see fit to give us, Lord. You did not leave us alone, but you left us an equipper, a companion, a counselor, a teacher, a helper. God, thank you. Thank you for your wisdom, your forethought, Lord. Thank you for the companionship that we have. It comes from you. God, I know that we're in a time right now where people need to operate in the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. Lord, when I think about the gifts of the Spirit, I think variety. You have called us to fight battles in different ways, Lord. You have called some of us to be more vocal, some of us to be behind the scenes, Lord, some of us to serve using our leadership gifts, and some of us using the gifts of mercy or hospitality or administration. God, I just know that it takes a variety of gifts, and you warned us in your word not to ever look down on anyone else's gifts. And so, God, I just pray for your Holy Spirit to make it abundantly clear to everyone who is joining in on this prayer call that uh, what it is you've called them to do, God. I just pray that you would make their gifts clear and you would give them the courage to use those gifts, Lord, to fight all forms of injustice in our world. And Lord, I pray that the fruit of the Spirit would be on display and it would be so attractive, Lord, that your love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness and long-suffering, Lord, and self-control, like all of those aspects of fruit, God, I pray that they would be so clearly on display within the body of Christ that it would be attractive to those who don't yet know you and there would be people who are drawn in and they want to get to know you. God, whether it's in a time of protest, whether it's in legislative halls, whether it's in business leadership or in classrooms or in households, God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would so overwhelm those who know you that it would be hard to contain the love and the truth that comes through when we walk in fellowship with you. God, we need your wisdom. We need your help. We need your direction. We need the Holy Spirit, Lord. Would you fill us and lead us in the ways that you want us to go? Help us to follow your lead, Lord, and not our own. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. And, oh, Lord, it's so good once again uh, to join in prayer with my dear brother. You have promised where two or three are gathered, and the two of us are on this call together, but many others are joining in in order to pray. I want to thank you for how I've witnessed your work in his life. And particularly, when I think of that Acts 1-8, that the Holy Spirit comes to empower us to be witnesses. I've just seen him with intentionality, with true compassion, with thoughtfulness, um, share his faith with so many others and in so many different contexts. So I thank you, Lord, that the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, is given to us at the time of our salvation, but yet there is a fresh infilling as the Holy Spirit is unleashed in us. And then we pray, Lord, that in your power, Holy Spirit, may we be unleashed as a kingdom force in order to honor and glorify you and to see your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. 
We pray this together in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, my brother. So good to talk with you and pray with you today. Kind of like old times, especially since you had to flaunt that mug one more time. <laughs> we'll discuss our college allegiances, our university allegiances off the call. So <laughs> I, I heard that an even guy was working from home during the pandemic and somebody spotted him in Ann Arbor. I'm just saying. So. <laughs> Uh, blessings, my brother. So grateful for you. All right. Thank you, Wayne.